Hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna talk about how to optimize Heroes of the Storm to get the best results. You know, the most buttery smooth experience, the most effective way to actually getting some gameplay done in Heroes of the Storm. Now, some of you might already know the stuff I'm going to say and some of you might not, so let's start with the beginning. I'm in the menus, I'm in the shop. Uh, if you press Control alt f and this is an important tool we have built into Heroes of the Storm actually to monitor everything. See, Control alt f on the upper left corner will display some stats. I got FPS, GPU and MEM, which means memory. FPS is frames per second and of course GPU means your video card, okay? So Control alt f you will toggle these on. You'll see that now I'm on 62. And we're gonna talk firstly about FPS. Is 62 bad? Is 62 good? How much FPS should I need? First and foremost, in the menus for Heroes of the Storm, the FPS is kept, uh, kept to 62 and that's a very good thing because it doesn't make your GPU work too hard for no real reason. In the menus, you don't really need more than that. And in game, you don't really need more than that. But let's talk about FPS. How much FPS should I have? Should I have 10, 20, 30, 1000 and so on and so forth. There's a lot of misinformation out there and the amount of FPS you should have constantly depends on your display, your monitor, its refresh rate. Most displays, most common displays have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. That means your display is capable of showing 60 frames per second. Okay, let me say that one more time. Your display is capable of showing 60 frames frames per second. If you want to check how, uh, what is the refresh rate of your display, just click properties, okay, on your display and it should be displayed there. Most again have 60 hertz, however, there are um, other more modern gaming uh, displays which cost an arm and a leg uh, that have 120, 144 or even greater refresh rates. Those specific displays can display 120, 144 or even higher frames per second. So what is the point to all of this laser? The point is simple. If your display has a normal 60 hertz refresh rate and you're uh, outputting 300 frames per second from your video card, you're not seeing uh, that. <laughs> okay, you are not seeing that because your display is not capable of showing you that all those frames. Okay, and that's when screen tearing occurs. This is not a problem in Heroes of the Storm for me. Even though my FPS goes far above 60, I don't have this problem and i never seen it happen up until this point. F uh, Heroes of the Storm is not exactly the most well optimized game, but at least with this specific aspect, I had no problem. So, the point is, if you got, you gotta uh, uh, kind of match your frame rate to that of your displays. Again, if you already have NVIDIA G-Sync or something like that, they're, they're gonna match up automatically, you don't need to worry about it. But this is the point about how much FPS should I have. Don't aim for a thousand, okay? What you want to do in a normal everyday uh, scenario is to have 60 all through a team fight. Why a team fight? Why are you talking about a team fight? Simply because that's when all the particle, particle effects get going, okay? All those cool, awesome effects you guys love, okay? Those impact your GPU, those impact your FPS. Let's uh, do a little bit of a test, shall we? We're gonna go in here to Asmo Dunks because he's cool and whatnot. You guys like the skin? I like the skin. We're gonna go into try mode and I'm gonna show you a few mistakes uh, most people make without even knowing. That's okay, we're gonna correct them now. Okay, so I'm in here. I got no minions, I got no nothing. I'm gonna wait for the actual scene to stabilize and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of something. Okay, so we're looking at my FPS right now. How many do I got? Let's say I got about 180. Okay, I got about 180 FPS. What programs you use in the background impacts your FPS heavily? Skype, Discord, TeamSpeak, whatever. So it's important to use lightweight programs if you must have them in the background. If not, not. Another... Uh, well, another mistake people make is leaving their browser with all their tabs on. Okay, look at my FPS. I'm a hundred. Okay, it's stabilizing roughly about 170 to 180, 100 and something like that. Let's open up Chrome. Okay, because uh, for some reason I need it in the background. You should also know that right now I'm using my video capturing tool, and uh, of course Battle.net is working as well. You'll see that I am all tabbed out now, and my FPS have has dropped to 30. Okay, this is not relevant. This this is just because I am all tabbed out and running in full screen window mode. So, we're gonna open up Chrome. We're gonna open up a YouTube video because for some reason I want it in the background. I don't know why. I'm gonna check out. I'm gonna open up Twitch and let uh, look at a little bit of laser gaming views because uh, I heard it, I heard it's entertaining and whatnot. I'm gonna open up my Facebook, my Twitter. Okay, all the usual crap people use in their browser. Okay, I'm gonna let them load and I'm going back to my game. Oh, what do you know? My frame rate dropped. Okay, I'm back to full screen game and my frame rate has dropped by I don't know 10, 15 FPS, something like that. If I go on further and keep on open uh, opening up other heavy programs, this will impact as well. 
Let's go. Okay, let's go. Open up more programs. More programs. See if I can get this thing to drop even harder. Okay. Look at that. Another drop. I'm 130, 180 now. Okay. I uh, know 140. 30, 140, 150, something like that. So the point of it is all your background programs impact your FPS. And to put it bluntly, close your shit if you want to have the best FPS you can. Okay? Close your background programs. Hit Control Alt Dell if you're using a Windows computer. Okay? Go to Task Manager and see what eats up all your computer's resources. All right, let's go close this, all this stuff and let's see if I can get my FPS bound now. Okay, I'm going to close all the unnecessary programs which were running in the background today. Hopefully, we will close them today. Okay, and the browser, kill the browser, die browser. And let's see, look, my FPS is back to what it was before. Okay, again, everything in the background impacts your FPS. What is your FPS dependent on? It's dependent on a couple of factors. First of all, it's going to depend on your GPU and that is the most important thing when considering a gaming setup. Your GPU, not your processor, your GPU, that's your video card, okay? So, most important, your video card, then processor, then the actual memory of your system. Obviously, you have dedicated memory for your video card as well and that only matters when it comes to actual resolution of the display you are using or if you want to go for multiple display setups. Usually, 2 gigabytes of RAM should be enough for a 1080p uh, display. Okay, if you're using 2 or want to use 3 or 4 or 5, just multiply like that. But 2 gigabytes should be more than enough for a 1080p display. I'm talking about video memory. That's the memory on your video card, not your computer's memory. That's entirely a uh, different uh, aspect. Okay, good. So, your processor, your video card, and obviously your memory. That's what impacts. What do you need to run games good? I see this question a lot. Uh, well, I'm running right now on i7 4600K and a GTX. Let's go to options, shall we? Okay. Let's go to option and an NVIDIA GTX 970. Do you need an i7 to run games to the max? No, I use an i7 simply because I do a whole lot of rendering, I do a whole lot of streaming, okay, and I need the i7. I need the hyper-threading that the i7 brings over the i5. If you just want to run games as best as you can, you don't need the i7. You don't need to invest that money, okay? i7 is more for multitasking anyway. And I apologize about the drill. It's been going on all morning and this is like the fifth time I actually try to uh, record this video. Sorry guys, nothing I can do about it. So, you don't need an i7. I see a lot of people investing a lot of money into i7. No, buy an i5 and invest that extra money in a video card, okay? Maybe an additional uh, uh, RAM slot, uh, an additional RAM piece. That would be good as well, but no need for an i7. Now, if we look at Heroes of the Storm at the specific option this game has, we're gonna switch to full screen for a second, not actually gonna apply. You see, resolution has a big impact on your frame rate as well. You should always run the native resolution of your display, okay? The recommended one, you see always recommended. I'm gonna talk about Windows computers simply because I don't care about Macs or if you're on a Mac, tough luck for you. Uh, you see, I'm running 1920 by, by 1080 right now, okay? This is the native resolution of my display. This is what I'm running. And you see the refresh rate we were talking about earlier, Heroes of the Storm even lets me set up the refresh rate. Anti-aliasing. What is anti-aliasing? This will reduce jaggedness, okay? You see the edges of objects, okay, when they get pixelized and all rough and whatnot. When you uh, enable anti-aliasing, this will reduce and make them a little bit more smooth, okay? That's what anti-aliasing does. However, this comes at a performance hit, obviously. Uh, all right, let's go back to window. This option right here, I want to talk a little bit about vertical sync. Don't use this. Okay, I'm gonna put it bluntly to you guys. Don't use this in an online game. In a single player game, sure, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Don't use vertical sync in any competitive game. Simply because vertical sync has uh, been proven to cause input lag. What is input lag, Laser? I have no clue. Well, that's the time between you actually doing something, okay, uh, issuing a command for your character, okay, like pressing this spell, okay, and actually it translating on the screen. So again, the time between you actually pressing a button and it happening on the screen, that is input lag. Okay, it will be bigger with vertical sync on. Vertical sync synchronizes your frame rate with the, to some fraction of your monitor's refresh rate. Okay, that will remove all problems with screen tearing. So if you really have a problem with screen tearing, which again, I don't have this on. And look, I have no screen tearing here. So the storm never did. Okay, so if you have a problem, really big problem with uh, screen tearing, turn vertical sync off. But for the record, I do not recommend this. This causes input lag and this is what you don't need. We're gonna jump into sound for a little bit, you might find this to be odd. Most people believe that the sound options have no impact upon your frame rate. That is wrong, 
okay? That is simply wrong because it also depends on what kind of sound card you got, what kind of processor that sound card has. Everything has more or less of somewhat of a small processor, believe it or not. So look at Enable Reverb, okay guys? Uh, reverb is a slight echo added to all sound effects. It increases sound realism, but disabling uh, this may improve performance. The may part there is simply because they don't know what kind of sound card you have. You have a good one, you don't have a good one. You have the onboard. Most, pe most people, most gamers use the onboard sound card, which I don't. Okay, and with a pair of headphones. That's not what I do because I know this impact. So, uh, if you're in that particular uh, case when you don't have a dedicated sound card, I remember uh, I would uh, recommend you guys disabling uh, enable rebirth. If not, keep it on. Test it out. Okay, everything and uh, this uh, everything with settings, with graphic settings and settings to, all together with the game is best looked at as trial and error. Allow yourself a little bit of time to test everything out and see what is the sweet spot for you. All right, done with this. I'm also gonna go into gameplay a little bit. No mouse and keyboard. This specific option right here. This is a gold option. Reduce mouse lag will make the mouse more responsive but may drastically reduce frame rate. It is correct. It does reduce frame rate by a lot, but this is important when it comes to actual control, okay? How uh, uh, we were talking about input lag earlier, this is pretty much it. Your mouse will be more responsive, okay? It will feel more fluent uh, with this option on, but you're gonna take a performance hit. I prefer to take the performance hit. My computer doesn't really feel it because again, I got a decent computer um, and I keep this on. And if your actual FPS allows you to, if you still maintain a, a, a 60 FPS, then definitely consider this option. It is golden from my point of view. All right, uh, back to graphics. Now, how should I set up my graphics? Usually, games, modern games like Heroes of the Storm, usually kind of detect what kind of setup you get and kind of set up, uh, kind of set up the graphics option so you don't have to. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU like I have, Shadow uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience even has a little bit of a scanner, okay, on there, and it will set up your options automatically if you allow it to, okay, so it gets like the best results or what they consider is the best results. Again, aim for high frame rates if you want the butter smooth experience, 60, uh, and again, depending on your panel. Each of these options here, each of these are clearly labeled if you actually take the time to read and see uh, and explain what they impact. Let's look at texture quality. Look at this. Texture quality relies on your total video memory. VRAM, not just simple RAM, VRAM. This is again the vi uh, the memory on your video card, okay? And it says, if you uh, low for 128 megabytes, uh, 256 for medium, ultra, a gigabyte, and so on and so forth, okay? It even gives you suggestions. If we look at physics, however, the situation changes. Uh, physics quality relies on your computer's processor, your CPU, okay? So if you got a good video card, you can, uh, with a high, uh, with a decent amount of memory you can leave texture quality to ultra but if your processor is pretty bad i don't know a core 2.2 or something like that some kind of old processor you might want to turn physics to medium or off altogether it's a it's again a depending on your setup and each of these like i said is clearly labeled look movies uh, movie quality relies on your computer's processor cpu clear to the point shadows uh shadows rely doesn't it say um oh yeah on your uh, graphics card Okay, so uh, thankfully Blizzard actually labeled everything pretty clearly. All you gotta do, like I said, invest a little bit of time, play around with these settings, look at your setup, okay, and see what is the sweet spot for you. And always keep in mind that everything run in the background will impact. Now I wanna talk about one more thing. Again, play with these around, look one by one, okay, it's pretty clear what uh, impacts what, and you should be able to get a balance if you pay a little bit of attention and actually invest a little bit of time, a couple of hours, maybe one, two, that's all. I want to talk about temperatures and that may seem weird to you. Like earlier we were looking, see my GPU now is up to 62. Uh, let me see if I can actually show you guys. I'm going to alt tab out and see if the temperature goes down. Uh, it's not because it's still rendering up 30. Uh, yeah, there we go. See, GPU now 57 degrees. It went down. Now if I go back to the game, it should go back up to 60 or something along those lines. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so obviously, um, the more uh, the more in use your graphic card is, the more hotter it will get. Okay, the more uh, it actually uh, renders, okay, frames for your display, the more hot it will get. 
Now, a lot of people make a mistake like buying computers or setting up uh, computers or making system, making rigs without adequate cooling. Why is cooling so important? I don't care. Well, apart from the fact that you can burn your uh, CPU or your graphics cards, you won't get the best results out of your games either. Why is that? Most, mo most modern CPUs and graphics cards have an inbuilt uh, kind of like protection system. We're going to talk about thermal throttling. God damn that drill. Um, now, what is thermal throttling? When your CPU or GPU, most modern CPUs and GPUs have these. The old ones don't. The old ones will just burn out if they get too hot. So most modern CPUs or GPUs have a built-in thermal protection system, thermal throttling. When they get to, an, to a point, okay, too high of a temperature for the CPU or for the GPU, they will undercloak. What is undercloaking? They will reduce the frequency at which they're running in order not to burn out. Okay, so they're just reduce the power they actually use. Uh, think of it like that. Okay, they reduce the power they actually use uh, in order not to burn up. So that can be counterintuitive. For example, you got like the best freaking, I don't know, CPU money can buy, but it's thermal throttling. Okay, it's too hot because you got a shitty cooler on it. Okay, you're not going to get the most out of it. This is the same case with laptops. For example, most uh, laptops thermal throttle like a bitch all the time. Most CPUs, okay, you're not gonna get maxed out of it unless you put it on a stand or a cooler or something. That's for laptops, mostly, okay? Uh, how can I know this? How can I know what temperature it is? How can I get the temperature, the temperature down and so on and so forth? You wanna use a little program. I'll recommend you guys use a program to monitor your computer's uh, components temperature. I used Hardware Info 64. You can use other if you want to. Again, my recommendation, HW Info 64. It's a lightweight program which monitors pretty much everything. You want to look at, at your GPU's temperature and at your processor's temperature. Normally, RAM doesn't overheat. Okay, it just doesn't. Simple as that. Unless, I don't know, maybe you got a kitten up in there over it. Then it may overheat. So, how do I keep my temperature down? Uh, you need to keep your system well ventilated if it's an air-cooled system or do some water cooling maintenance if your system is water cooled. What are the normal temperatures? There's no way of me being able to tell you that because it depends on your system. For example, I know that for my processor 90 degrees is unacceptable, but mine never goes over 60 in full load. Everything, uh, you need to take everything into consideration at full load, okay, when everything is in full swing and running at the maximum, GPU and CPU. For example, for my uh, GPU in particular, I know that 95 or 100 degrees is the thermal throttling limit and that's already dangerous and it's gonna undercloak and I'm not gonna get the full power of my GPU. I'm not even close to that, it never really runs next to 70 because I was very careful when setting up proper cooling for my computer. And that's, well, I think that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Keep in mind that there are some issues regarding specific setups. It's never really a good idea to set up a multiple GPU system. Stuff like SLI and Crossfire usually have compatibility issues. And many of these guys that set up these awesome kick-ass machines, okay, which cost a lot of money, have problems like, dude, I can't even run this game at 60 and I got two 980s. What the hell? Okay, those are compatibility issues. And for each of those, you got to look up your own answers. Because again, it's too specific to give a wide answer. Uh, and well, that's about it. about it. If I can help you with a good advice, I will. Let me know in the comment section down below if you got questions. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go kill this guy. Uh, but in the meantime, bye guys. I'll see you again soon.